it's an honor to get to do Spotlight again with you today. And uh, moving into a, a little mini-series on what, what, what can you really do to build a relationship with God? So let's, let's, let's start with some of the, the hard questions. And uh, I have really had these questions for a chunk of my life. And I talked to everybody I could get my hands on, and I read every book that I could find. What really is a relationship with God like? I would ask people, do you hear any voices? Well, no, you know. And uh, so I, I would buy Knowing the Face of God, How to Know God, <laughs> Five-Day Plan by Maury Menden, How to Have a Relationship with God. I called my Uncle Maury Menden over and over again. I said, what, what is a relationship like? If we're saved by having a relationship, then you better know how to have a relationship. I, I'm back pastoring in Chicago a little bit right now for a few weeks, my old church in Hinsdale. And there's a man there who is now baptized, but back then I was trying to get him baptized. Great guy, a guy named Doug. And uh, I was giving him Bible studies, trying to win him before I moved from there to La Sierra. And I said, I'm going to donate a night a week for these last few weeks to get my friend Doug. I didn't get him until later. So uh, we're way down into the Sabbath Bible study, and uh, all of a sudden he just floors me with, but Pastor Dan, how do you really know, you know? How do you really know that there is a God? You never get to see him. You never get to hear his voice. How can you be really sure that there is a God? How do you have a relationship with a completely invisible God? Well, <laughs> I struggled with that too. How many times I would kneel down in my study as a pastor and just say, God, give me something I know for sure, you know, and just wait for some sort of light and eat, pray, love. Uh, Julia, Julia Roberts goes over to the ashram in India and they meditate for hours hoping for some transcendental, absolutely unmistakable experience with, with the divine and God. Well, what can we say about that? Uh, it is why some people want to have kind of a mystical, magical experience like speaking in tongues. Okay, uh, there is a God because look, I'm, I'm doing this thing that it would not be happening any other way. I was happy when uh, we had these demon deliverance ministries sometimes because real things happen. And when you brought the name of Jesus, and them, they, they clearly reacted. I said, okay, that's, that's kind of impressive. But uh, you hate to get your authentication for Jesus from, from the demons. There's a verse that uh, helped me to some degree, 1 Corinthians 13, where it says, Now we see through a glass darkly. Yes, we have, we have distance between here and God. Yes, God, we have some boundaries that God is different from us. Not just physical distance, but a whole other level of being. And uh, so we, we understand that there are some limits. God says, my thoughts are higher than yours. Uh, you'll never you know, understand me, get your hands on me, and be able to put God into a box and define him and kind of have God under your control. Uh, it isn't like that. But having put those limitations into the conversation... Can we be clear that the Bible clearly says we can have a relationship with God, even in a world of sin, and even when the fact that God cannot come down and just walk around with us like he did with Adam and Eve. We were made in the image of God so we could have a relationship with him. Let's start with that. The image of God was put on. I dedicated a baby this week, and I got a line from Augustine. You know, Every baby has the image of God there. So we understand that that's what we're made for, and we're hungry for that relationship. And nothing else in this world will ever fill that. You can try to buy all you want or get a great house or get degrees after your name or go to Las Vegas and have all the fun in the world. It'll never feel full and satisfied and complete because we're hungry for God. God put this God-shaped vacuum in for a relationship with him. And then he just says these amazing things. If you'll search for me, you will find me. 
I will be found by you, you know, Jeremiah 29. It's like, how do, you, how do you get out of that? That's what it says. I will be found by you. Jesus says, Revelation 3.20, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and eat with them and you with me. There's going to be a relationship. Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you, Hebrews 13, 5. See? So uh, pretty clear that we can have a relationship. I quoted Psalm 23 in a prayer with a family tonight. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. So let's just nail that down. You can have a with relationship with an invisible God. How to make that stronger, how to make it more real, we'll talk over the next few spotlights. Thanks for being with us. God bless you all. Thank you for watching Spotlight. We're so excited about this. We hope that you'll subscribe and so you'll get all of them. And please just forward it on to others and tell other people about it. And let's just see what kind of an audience we can get for these messages of Spotlight. God bless you.